Hello there, yes, I'm back. Um, uh, I'd started doing a series of videos that were just going to be looking at evidence supporting a spherical Earth. Uh, so I wanted to continue that. Now, I know I'm not putting out videos at a very high rate anymore. I'm not really wanting to, just maybe now and then. But I really wanted to get this video done. And it's just going to be looking at evidence from the sun that supports a spherical Earth. Uh, now... How do you test a model? Well, one way you test a model is you look at predictions that the model makes. So I'm going to look at predictions that the spherical Earth heliocentric model makes. Now, I would recommend that you watch this video here. It's called Mechanisms of the Seasons. I'll put a link in for it. And it's an excellent animation that explains the way that the sun lights up the Earth over the course of a year. Now, it's not to scale, but that doesn't matter. It's showing you the main points and explains the sauce this is, explains the equinox um, and what's going on. So um, I'd advise watching that if you're not entirely sure how this all works. If we imagine looking at the Earth from the perspective of the sun uh, and say it was on an equinox, the sun would be above the equator. So the Earth would kind of be looking like this. To the Sun. Now supposing it's midday on the prime meridian on an equinox and the Sun would be exactly here. It would, this is what the Earth would look like. So for anyone along the left side here, the Sun would just be on the horizon and rising, and for anyone along here, it would just be on the horizon and setting. And then as the year goes on, the Earth tilts towards the Sun, and so it looks like this. The Sun's directly above the Tropic of Cancer. And so for anyone along here, the Sun is on the horizon. And you can see that in the Arctic Circle, you're going to be getting, seeing the Sun all the time. And then the Earth tilts back the way, and then it tilts up like this, so you're looking at the Tropic of Capricorn and the Arctic Circle's visible, uh, can see the sun 24 hours a day. Right, so this model makes very specific predictions about what you would see the sun doing at, at your location. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can use Google Earth to predict the direction the sun would rise and set at your location. I'll specifically just look at rising, but you could adapt this for, for working out where it'll set. You just have to do it to the west instead of to the east. <clears throat> um, now, so how far away is the sun when it's just on the horizon your location? Well, intuitively, you might think it was exactly um, a quarter of the circumference of the Earth. It would be from, say, from here to here a quarter of the circumference. Uh, it's actually slightly more than that because the atmosphere bends the light. Um, when you see the sun on the horizon, it's actually slightly below the horizon. Refractions is bending up a little bit. So it's a little bit further away than a quarter of the circumference. It's actually about 6,280 miles away when you start to see it. So that's how far away the sun is when it's either rising or setting for you. Right, so let's go to when I live. which is Dundee in Scotland. Now, what I've already done is I've already marked places where the sun will be when it, it's rising and setting for different days of the year for me. So first of all, we'll go back to the June solstice, the 21st of June. And I'll draw a line straight from where Dundee to the place where the sun would be on the June solstice, which is all the way around here. So it's on the Tropic of Cancer. And as you can see, I'm roughly 6,280 miles away. So let's go back to Dundee. So the sun, according to this, would be appearing at roughly north east. So a little bit further north than northeast. 
a heading of 42 degrees. So let's have a look at what time and date says. So June in Dundee, solstice 21st, and it says the sun would be rising at 42 degrees. Now, I know I'm not confirming that, but all the information that's on here, you can check it for your location. Okay, there's nothing on this website you can't check for your location. So you don't have to take this website's word for it. Um, you'll find that it is perfectly accurate, but you can get out and test this yourself. You don't have to go into outer space. You don't have to go to Antarctica or anything silly. You can just stay where you are and check it. So 42 degrees on the June solstice. Now, today, according to this, the sun is at 21 degrees, 18 degrees north. Sorry, 21 degrees, 18 minutes north. Um, so I've marked a place for that on the earth that'll be the right distance away from where I am. So if I go to today, orientate it north. So you can see 21 degrees, 18 minutes north. See for yourself where that is. Okay, so it's all the way over here, near the Philippines. So that's where the sun would be when it was rising for me. So if I go back to Dundee, so it's still kind of in a northerly direction, and I'd be expecting it to rise at 47 degrees. Now let's go back to here. So the 16th of July, 47 degrees, indeed it works. So let's do the next one. So the next big one I'm going to look at is the September equinox, when the sun's on the equator. So there you can see that's the equator. You can see that's 6,280 miles from my location, so I'll pull out a little bit so you can see where that is. So that's where the sun would be when I was just starting to see it. So let's go back to Dundee on the equinox, that is. And you can see it's roughly due east. It's actually 89 degrees. Now I know people say, oh, the sun rises due east on an equinox everywhere on Earth. Roughly it does, it's pretty close. The reason it's not exactly 90 degrees is because we're seeing the sun a little bit further away than we should do because of the atmosphere. So that's why it's always a little bit off from 90 degrees. Okay, but it is, I mean, if you, you saw the sun at 89 degrees, it would be as good as due east for you. So that's accurate enough to just say that's pretty much due east. Um, now let's look at the last one, which is the December solstice. Oops, I didn't check the Equinox one. I'll go back and have a look at that. So I'll get that there just now. Let's go back and see what it says for the Equinox. So September 23rd, 89 degrees. Yeah, that's right. So let's go back to here. So um, this is on the Tropic of Capricorn, 6,280 miles away from me. So it's right down here, down near Madagascar. So that's where the sun would be on the December solstice when I, it starts to rise at my location. So let's go back to where I am. And you can see it's sort of um, about southeast really. So it's 134 degrees. And let's go back to here. December, 21st of December is the solstice, 134 degrees. Okay. So, Google Earth gives you a nice model of the spherical Earth that you can use to make predictions about exactly what time, what direction the sun would rise and set on any given day of the year at your location. All you have to know is the position of the sun and um, get that 
draw a line from where you are that's 6,280 miles long to the correct latitude of the sun. So let me, if I go back, I, I did one for today, so if I go back to that one. I'm going to say that's 21, eight, 21 degrees, 18 minutes north. I'll just show you that, I'll just show you, so you know, I'm not messing about here, this is right. 21 degrees, 18 minutes north, and that's where the sun is today. 16th July 2017. So on any day of the year, you can go in here, find out where the sun is, draw a line from your location that's at the correct latitude and is 6,280 miles away and it will tell you the direction the sun should rise on that day for you. And you can check it, either by getting up and having a look at the sun or by just looking on time and date. So the spherical Earth model can predict exactly what direction the sun will rise and set at any given latitude on any given day of the year. So in what sense is there no evidence supporting a spherical Earth and a heliocentric model of the solar system? Because this is exactly what you'd expect to see. Um, I mean, there are other, other things about the sun, as we've pointed out so many times before. If the sun setting was due to perspective, it would get smaller as it moved away. It would, get, it would move slower and slower as it got towards the horizon, and it would never set. I mean, if the sun was 3,000 miles above a flat Earth, to get down to an angle of elevation of just one degree, just above the horizon, it would have to be about 180,000 miles away. It's just ridiculous. You know, in reality, the sun is exactly the same size in the sky, and it moves with the same speed, indicating very strongly that the sun is very far away and that the Earth is rotating. <coughs> just as this model here shows. Um, now... Is there any way you can make these, um, explain these observations with a flat Earth model? Well, I think we know the answer to that. Uh, what's the best they've come up with? The, the sun moving in a giant circle around the North Pole. It's comically wrong. It can't explain equinoxes. And it can't explain this fact here, which I'll look at here, which I demonstrated on Google Earth, but I'll show more clearly here, which is the fact that the direction that the sun rises and sets at any location kind of oscillates north and south. Uh, so there's the June solstice for me. So now let's go to today. So it goes a bit south. And then go to September. Roughly due east, setting due west. And then go to December. Roughly southeast. And roughly southwest. Um, so the place where the sun rises and sets oscillates north and south on the horizon at any given location, and twice a year it appears due east, sets due west. Um, now, is there any way of explaining that on any flat Earth model? No, there isn't. Now, I know there's a lot of flat Earthers now they are saying, oh, we don't endorse a model, you know, the cult of Dell, we've given up on all that. <clears throat> well, that doesn't really get you out of the problem because... As I've talked about this before, the sun describes paths over the earth because there's always a place where the sun is directly overhead, which is where we say the sun is. We say that's where the sun is. And it follows a closed loop on any given day, roughly. So it describes a path. Now, given the fact that there's a high degree of symmetry in the behaviour of the sun, you're left with two options, either a straight line. The sun goes east to west, as I've talked about, and that means that you've got the Pac-Man issue, the sun is still loop somehow. So, you know, that way madness lies. Um, your only feasible option is, is that it's following some kind of circle. And if it's doing that, to produce these kinds of ob observations of the sun kind of where it rises and sets or appears and disappears, oscillating like this on the horizon, the sun would have to have absolutely bizarre properties. It'd have to be able to appear in completely the wrong direction from where it is. Um, it's just, it's just completely ridiculous. I mean, two years ago, 
I went into all this. I made these videos here discussing this. I'll put links for them so you can watch them again or for the first time if you've not seen them, where I just discuss how ridiculous this notion of the sun moving in a giant circle is. It doesn't fit with anything that we see. Okay? So this model here predicts exactly what we see. So if anyone says to you that there's no evidence for a spherical Earth or heliocentric model, okay, th they're talking rubbish. Because that model predicts exactly what we see. And there is no flat Earth model that can produce these observations. There is no path the Sun could be following above a flat Earth that could produce the observations that we see in relation to the Sun. It's impossible. Okay, so you can do this yourself. You can check using using Google Earth. The way I've shown you that it does, in fact, the spherical Earth model does, in fact, predict exactly where the sun will rise <coughs> and set for your location on any day of the year.